welcome to those that are on early. Uh, I see that the chat is live. Thank you, Evan, for testing the chat, my buddy. We are uh, we're gonna give it a couple of minutes. Let folks trickle in, and we're gonna hit it. And uh, I'll speak from a PDF that we have prepared. Uh, I know our good buddy Orlando has been teasing it in the Facebook group uh, all week, and so I'm excited to unpack this with uh, with you all, and also uh, share a link later uh, to where you can go deeper on this. So um, we'll drop it in the chat here. We'll also make it available in the comments section in the Facebook for those that are catching this after the fact. Um, so there's a little a little tease before we get started. Um, so let me make sure we're streaming into the group and uh, we'll hit it in just about one minute. Boom, we're live. All right, so that's working. Hey, Ed, what's up, buddy? Good to see you. We'll give it one more minute and then we'll jump in. Um, I'm hopping on to these lives early to ensure that if the emails go out with the link to join the Zoom, join the Zoom, the Zoom is up and running. What we've realized is that our email service provider, although it's meant to go out five minutes prior to the start of the lives, we'll send you guys the email much earlier than that. And then you're trying to log in and we're actually not live yet. So in an attempt to remedy that, I'm jumping on early from now on. And so uh, let's get right into it. <clears throat> so I'm going to jump into a screen share. I'll make sure I leave the chat open so I can uh, see and engage with you all. And then just let me know in the chat. Uh, you ought to be seeing our private money management blueprint, this PDF we've teased in the group um, before, but we're going to spend some time on it today. And as we work through it, I'm also going to make a link available in the chat where you all can go and access the Kajabi version of this, right? Uh, I'm often pretty terrible about housekeeping and remembering to come full circle on stuff. So I have to. Uh, for my benefit and yours, put this stuff out there beforehand. Otherwise, I'll get caught up. We'll start going through this, and then I'll forget to even uh, mention it. So I owe you guys a link to a Kajabi where you can get access to this and go that much deeper after uh, we wrap today. So hold me, hold me to that. <clears throat> so first things first, let's jump into what all is the system for uh, raising private money, and then the individual components, and then as much as the time will allow, I'm going to go into it. But like I said, inside of Kajabi, there's 15 modules where each of these is broken down deeper, 10, 12 minutes per. And uh, that's where you can get like that much more depth on this. But I want to introduce the concept. Um, and so if you're seeing this for the first time, it's robust. It uh, looks overwhelming, but it's compartmentalized. It's uh, very systematic in how it was created and how it's meant to be executed on. So a private money management system is inclusive of three parts or pieces. It's about acquiring private money lenders, not the money itself, but the lenders that you'll draw the monies from, right? So you're thinking about leads for um, buying uh, unkept homes. Same thing. Like we need leads to acquire lenders to ultimately borrow from and get funds from. Um, once you've acquired those lender leads, what, uh, what do you do then? to um, incentivize them to lend to you. Well, we call that presenting the opportunity. So it's acquiring the lender. It's then pitching the opportunity uh, in a way that they can wrap their heads around and ultimately feel comfortable lending to you on, right? Uh, and we'll talk about a differentiation between presenting it as an opportunity and as like some sort of a need or a loan, right? Like opportunity is a key word there. And then the third and final part, the most important part, I would argue, is how you communicate with them once they're on board. Um, do you just take monies from these lenders and then they don't hear from you again until the project is done or until something goes wrong, right? Like that's not a way to build a relationship with a private money lender that encourages them to keep coming back to you and lending to you. So uh, we'll talk about those three pieces. Uh, again, just uh, let me know in the chat that you can see this as I'm... Uh, going. I don't want to uh, zoom in or have this be too small that you can't follow. So give me some feedback in the chat just so I know. And then 
we'll uh, we'll work from there. Yes, I can make it, you know, about this big, and then we can kind of scroll left to right. So you've seen the whole picture. Uh, you know now that it has three distinct parts. So acquiring private money lenders is the first step. If you've got nobody to pitch to, there's no loans to be had. There's there's no funds to be uh, generated, right? So think about how do I consistently get in front of folks? What can I do to consistently have people um, on my calendar to talk to about what it is that I'm doing, whether or not I have an opportunity? This is the critical part. Most folks wait till they've got a deal under contract before they reach out to someone to pitch or look for money. Well, at that point, you're going to feel pressure, right? And you're going to come off as desperate. It's important that you be relentlessly fundraising, be relentlessly raising, be having conversations with lenders long before you need money from them. That way, when the time does come and you do need funds, it's not the first time you're talking to them and asking them for hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? You've already presented a sample deal. You've already talked to them about what your projected strategy is, um, the types of things that are in your buy box, right? Like they now have a comfort level with you that's um, more likely to result in them lending to you, as opposed to having that first initial conversation and closing that conversation with, yeah, can you send me a wire, right? That That's not going to work. So think about generating uh, leads conversations with lender leads each week. And what you're looking at here, these images first are of a scorecard where we track how many of those are happening, right? I would challenge you to do one a week at first and one new relevant lender conversation each week. So, and then track to that. Um, how are you going to generate those? There's a handful of different ways. Like I said, inside of the Kajabi, which we'll drop the link for in a bit, you can find all the different strategies that we employ to do that. I would encourage some of you, depending on what your background is, uh, like, have you worked in a corporate environment for 10 or 15 years? If so, go mine your LinkedIn. Those lender leads likely live there, right? If you're younger, say, <clears throat> excuse me, and you haven't yet uh, logged 10 years in the corporate world, right? You might be tapping into friends, parents, aunts and uncles, right? That might be more friends and family than it is coworkers for you. But start thinking about <clears throat> organically within my network, who can I be talking to about uh, the types of projects that I'm going to be doing so that when I do lock up one of these deals, I can go to them with an opportunity, right? And that's organic outbound, you generating leads. Uh, another thought might be, um, do you have a budget, <clears throat> excuse me, for marketing? And uh, are you doing anything that you could leverage now to generate inbound lender leads, right? So think about outbound and inbound. Outbound is organic and it's you working your sphere, friends and family, coworkers, folks at your gym, people at barbecues, right? Whatever it is. That's your organic outbound lead gen. Inbound might be, hey, I'm actually already active. Some of you on this call may already be active in doing deals. So for you, it's about showing people what you're doing via social media. These are the examples you see here, right? In the bottom left, using imagery and visuals to show folks what you're doing via social media, and then simply putting a small call to action. If you're interested in learning more about how we do what we do, click this link. And maybe it's a calendar link for them to book with you, right? Uh, if you're interested in putting money to work alongside our private money and alongside our existing investors, click this link, right? And then you want to be funneling those inbound leads now, because these are not outbound now. These are inbound leads. You want to be funneling those through to a calendar so you can take those calls. Um, you could structure it on every Friday from eight to noon, you're going to carve out time in your calendar to take inbound lender lead calls, right? So that way you could be in the right frame of mind to host those calls each and every Friday for that four hour window. You likely won't be on the phone for all four hours, but that's the window on your calendar where you block out for that. And then one final thing to be mindful of with whether it's organic or paid 
inbound or outbound leads. However you get on the phone with those folks, you're going to want to answer these three questions. Think about how much are they looking to lend? How soon do they want to lend it? And are they the decision-making party? Because all three of those are key for you to know. So you can then start accounting for those monies as you're looking for opportunities, as you're looking for the next deal. So imagine then you're having a conversation with a former coworker, a manager of yours when you worked corporate, and now you're doing real estate full-time. And that person commits verbally to putting $200,000 with you after they sell their vacation home um, in three months. And so you want to be tracking that. You want to know that there was a verbal commitment, a soft commitment made by that person for that amount in that amount of time, right? You'll also want to ask, hey, do you have any other intentions for that money? You want to also know that, right? Like, oh, you know what? We're actually considering buying in um, if the stock market dips again, right? Like, okay, well, I want to be conscious of that too, because although they said they have 200K ready to deploy in three months, if the market dumps and they decide to buy in, now that 200K went away. And that's a very real example. This is the kind of stuff that happens. And so the only way to be um, building in redundancies is to be having a lot of those conversations and be tracking a lot of that. And so here, you've got the questions you want to ask. You want to be tracking their responses to those questions, right? Don't be rote about it, right? It's not like, hey, I'm on the phone with this person. Let me make sure I ask one, two, and three. Throughout the course of the conversation with that person, you'll get those questions answered and then key those questions into your CRM. And maybe right now you don't use a CRM, right? Like we use a tool called High Level. It's far more robust than most folks need. You can get away with doing this in Excel. That's how we did it for many years. So think about, all right, how am I going to get consistent about reaching out to people, organic, um, outbound, inbound, whatever makes sense for me. I'm going to commit to doing one of those. And then I'm going to get on the, I'm get on the phone with one person each week. I'm going to track that conversation. I'm going to get these three questions answered throughout the course of that conversation. And then I'm going to keep that data, track all that information in some sort of a CRM. Maybe it's just something as simple as like a notes file, right? Like what you're looking at here is a contact inside of your iPhone. And then in notes, right? In that contact is where you could put the answers to these three questions. So the next time you get on the phone with them, you have those responses fresh in your mind. And so I'm going to pause there. That's the first element of private money lender, like mastery of building out this system for acquiring private money. And so I'll kick it over to you guys. Drop some notes in the chat. Let me know if this is resonating with you. Um, while you're doing that, I'm also going to open up something, a window I had meant to open up. So let me do that. And I want to hear from you guys in the chat. How's this sit with you? Does this make sense? Is this um, how you're thinking about approaching raising money the same way you're thinking about uh, finding deals? Or is this a new reframe for you? Okay, so a couple of quick questions. How do you suggest presenting Zoom or in person? Uh, great question. Actually, as we transition into opportunity next, I'm scrolling along. You guys should be seeing that now. We're gonna uh, we're gonna talk about that, and so bear with me. We'll get to that in the next five to ten minutes. Um, Alice has a list of lenders already. Did three to five a day for weeks. It was exhausting. Yeah, <laughs> I can see why. That is a lot. That's a lot of conversations to be having. Uh, I like the idea of compressing that window. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily encourage anyone to do that much of it. Uh, that volume can be exhausting if and only if you have a deal that needs funding, then it's full court press. And I would advocate for doing that. If uh, you're doing this to initiate dialogue with prospective lenders, that's aggressive. And I would imagine that by now you've got verbal commitments from folks in far excess of the deal flow that you've got. Um, it should be happening in parallel. Like you ought to be, as you start to scale and build a fix and flip business, um, you ought to be finding deals at about the same pace that you're talking to folks, right? At first, you'll find more deals than you'll have money for. 
Eventually, the pendulum will shift and you'll be finding more money than you have deals for. The idea is to strike a bit of a balance and to always have marketing working to find you deals and also always be talking to people. Um, so yeah, I can definitely relate. I know there's been times where we've had to raise and like you're on your heels and it, uh, it is exhausting. So uh, <laughs> out of all the ones I vetted, I only like seven of them. Well, that's a different story, but right. Like, are they willing to invest? Are they serious? Did you feel like their commitments were firm? Um, those I like, right. Um, and we also don't want to borrow from folks who are going to micromanage. Like we want them to trust our process and our ability to operate and execute. If they don't do that, then, you know, when you say liked, that's what I think about. Like, yeah, I don't like borrowing from people who don't trust me. Right. Like, and there are people out there that will lend to you, but um, they're going to micromanage you because they don't actually trust your ability to execute, which is kind of counterintuitive. Why would they have lent anyway? But people do. So let me transition over to presenting the opportunity. So to John's question, right? Uh, think about, we need to position this in a way that a prospective lender can wrap their head around. They can get excited about this opportunity, right? And that's the key word. And you can present uh, visually, ideally, is the best way. We like the idea in our new, <clears throat> excuse me, in our new post-COVID Zoom-friendly world, you get to do what we're doing right now with prospective lenders. So you control the dialogue, right? You get to prepare for that conversation. So it's about reports, building out a deck, presenting the deck, and then following up with the documents to formally execute the loan. So think first about how you're going to generate a report. A lot of us will do back of the napkin math, right? Like there's math here on a deal we did with our accelerator last night. I just quickly did it on a post-it in parallel as the group was going through the exercise, but that's not good enough for a lender. No one is going to give you hundreds of thousands of dollars on napkin math, right? Um, unless it's a rich uncle. And of course, then they trust you and they could care less about the deal. They're more about, let me support you. But what I'm trying to do is uh, create a system that you all can use for everybody right across the board, whether it's friends and family or it's a savvy private money lender who's lent hundreds of times. So build out a report, use a tool like Flipper Force if you want. That's the tool that we use. That's the one uh, that we advocate for. Part of why we love it is because the aesthetics of the report are so good that a lender can't help it get excited about looking at the report and what we're proposing. I then take that report and weave it into a deck that I can present, right? And you can build decks in whatever tool you use. It could be a PowerPoint or it could be a presentation in Canva. That's how we do ours. Excuse me. And then be delivering that presentation with enthusiasm. Be a storyteller. Take the report, although the report is visually, like you, you can see how visually, how aesthetically appealing the reports are, they are still very static and they still just have numbers on them. So now it's incumbent on you to take that report and build out a deck and present the deck. You need to cast a narrative, tell a story that this prospective lender can align with. And the way to do that is, again, with visuals, of course, but be creating a story arc for the same reason that you'll watch season after season of your favorite Netflix story. It's the same mindset you need to have as you put together a presentation to deliver to a lender. Take them along on the journey. Hey, here's what it looks like to acquire this property. Here's what we anticipate doing with it. Here's what we're getting it for. Here's what the after repair value is per the comps. Here's the comps that support it. Here's how fast they're selling. Oh, and they're selling for above asking in this market. Take a look at this. They're selling for 13 days on market at 8% above asking. That's the average for the comps that have traded in the last six months, right? So see now how you're weaving together a story or you're creating this narrative that the that the lender can follow along. And then in the end, it's, hey, do you want to be a part of this opportunity? That's how 
you ultimately close the presentation. It's like, and this is what we're looking for. We're looking for a partner who's willing to lend us $250,000 at 10% simple interest for one year. We're likely to finish the project in far less than that. We're targeting eight months, but we'll write up the terms. It'll be a one-year note. And then you can say, hey, and here, right? Here's what a formalized loan package looks like. So now, not only have you cast this, th this vision that they can align with, but you've also formalized it. Like this borrower in the lender's eyes, this borrower knows what they're doing, right? They're a prudent operator. They put together a report. They built out this PowerPoint. They've articulated to me what they're going to do with my money in a way that I can follow. And they've got this loan package that I can sign off on um, that's formalized, that if I wanted to, I could put in front of my attorney, which some lenders will, others will not, right? But it, this is formalized in a way that I'm like, I'm confident here, right? I'm not just giving someone money on a handshake in a paper bag down an alley, right? Like this is about presenting an opportunity in a way that they can align with and they can get behind and ultimately lend on. So I'll take another pause there and uh, I'll field some questions around this. Again, um, and Evan, if, if you're with us now, drop the link in both chats. You can drop the link here in the Zoom for folks that want to go deeper offline uh, and drop it in the Facebook as well for those that are streaming and catching this later to the Kajabi for the private money um, lender course where all of this is broken out, where I go deeper, right? Like I'm using this um, PDF to drive our talk today, but I'm only able to give us 10 minutes per section. And I have 10 minute modules for each individual component in the Kajabi. So I want to make sure um, we can get that to everybody. Uh, so a couple of questions. Uh, video communication is solid. It keeps them in check uh, in the know without asking. Yeah. Again, another thing we're going to talk about is how to keep them engaged. Um, far too often, this highlighted section, this private money lender documents piece, which by the way, you'll also get access to those three documents, editable versions of those documents, editable versions of the reports of the PowerPoint, everything inside of the Kajabi. So um, definitely take advantage of that. But what often happens is a borrower will take these, take this loan from a private money lender and then ghost the lender, right? I had a private money lender reach out to us. I'll give you a story to illustrate this. He reaches out and he says, hey, I lent uh, $360,000 at 1.6% and I haven't heard from my borrower. Does that seem odd? And of course, my answer to that is, is like, yes, that's very odd. First of all, that's a large sum of money at a really great term, right? Like we wouldn't expect to borrow that kind of money at those rates in today's economy. We're borrowing that kind of money at two in 10 from hard money lenders. So to get that money at one in six is very generous. But to then have communication breakdown, to not have the docs package get to the lender for a week after the wire hits, that is not ideal, right? Instantly, the lender starts wondering, did I, did I send my money to the right person? And then to have communication be nearly non-existent after that, is like equally concerning. This lender is unlikely to ever deploy with this borrower again because it, there's been too much uncertainty. There's been a lack of communication the whole way. Um, and so, yeah, happy to share that antidote because I think it's very telling of what's happening in this space right now. And so here, let me transition now. It's a perfect segue into the communication piece. And... Uh, Here's where, and this is where I'll argue, most of your effort ought to be once the funds exchange hands. So like, sure, you've got to acquire the private money lender leads. You've got to get on the phone with them. You've got to get verbal commitments from them. You've then got to present the opportunity to them in a way that gets them excited and gets them to initiate a wire. Now you've got their money. Like I said, a lot of borrowers think it stops there and now they just shift their focus to the project. And they're overwhelmed with project management because they don't have the right tools and systems for that. At the same time, they're forgetting about the borrower, about the lender, I should say. Well, I argue that that's when you double down. Like 
that's when you take advantage of this opportunity to get in front of your lenders monthly at minimum, right? So whether it's the first of the month, the, five, the fifth of the month, see here, the 30th of the month, you decide what kind of cadence you want to be using to communicate what the project, like project progress with your lenders. It's, a, it's upon you to decide that, right? So on the first of every month, we commit and we encourage all our students to do the same thing. We do video updates on site at each of the rehabs to let the investors know what we're doing with their money, pointing over our shoulder at the things that are happening, right? Just recently doing a video at one of the rehabs, pointing over my shoulder at the stack of hardwoods about to be installed. So the lender can associate their dollars with the progress at the job, point over your shoulder at the insulation that just went in, right? Like giving them like a monthly touch. And uh, so again, we advocate for doing it via video. It's, we found the most impactful way. It's the way that resonates best with lenders. And we've tried everything. We've tried text. We've tried the emails, right? You're seeing copy here of a long-winded email, very colorful, very engaging, but nothing beats this video. Nothing beats this video in the field of you letting your lender know where you're at in the project. So uh, I won't beat that horse to death. I'm encouraging you to think about the cadence with which you want to be doing it, and then how, what medium do you want to use? First of the month, fifth of the month, whatever works for you. Um, and then are you going to send a video? Are you going to do it via text? Is that the kind of relationship you have with your lenders? Are you going to do it via like a formalized email, a template that you could just repurpose each month? So encouraging you to think about how you would do that. Another thing uh, that we also offer that most investors, uh, borrowers don't because they can't is access to project specific documents, right? Like most investors aren't managing their projects tight enough to have the ability to even make this offer. We can offer to let our lenders see our P&Ls every week, right? We are running project P&Ls, pro profit and loss statements, P&Ls, every Friday morning for every project. Those reports are generated out of QuickBooks. They're PDF'd and they're saved into a file, into a document repository. You see the here on Box, where all of this lives and is made available to the lender if they want. If the lender's wanting to see how we're tracking to our budget that we gave them back here, if you stay with me, right? Here's our budget, right? If we're tracking to that budget, how close are we to what we projected we would spend? That is available to them if they're interested. Most are not, but you will have a handful of lenders who do want to know that, who do want to be a part of that. They want to be at that level with you, right? Uh, typically, you'll see that out of folks that are uh, in the finance space, accountants, folks like that, attorneys, right? They'll want to understand like how you're tracking to your projections, to your budgets. So like I said, most investors aren't in a position to make that offer and to use that as another means of communication with their lenders because they don't track their projects properly. If you do, and if you use our system, you will you'll have this and you'll be able to make this available whether the lender wants it or not. It's good that you have it. So that's another communication point. Uh, and then the final point of communication and the one that I'd argue is probably most impactful if done correctly is site visits, which depending on where your lenders are located, depending on where you're doing your projects, inviting folks to the project, once they've made a commitment to lend to you before you start the project at all, is a great time to do it. A second time is around roughs. And especially if you're doing pre-construction sale and you're doing a hard hat open house, that's when we like to invite the lenders back. We'll invite them before we start so they could see what we're looking to work, what we're working with. We'll invite them back during the hard hat open house. And then we'll invite them back at finish. Like once the house is done, ideally the house is pre-sold. So we'll just take them through a walkthrough and let them see the finished product before we hand the keys over. Or if the house is not pre-sold, we invite them back for the actual open house, the retail open house on the day that everybody gets to come and see the house. So again, there's a lot of excitement. We'll go live on MLS on Tuesday, but we'll delay showings till the open house on Sunday, in turn building up a lot of... Um, interest, right? And all of that 
will happen at once. The doors will open at one o'clock on Sunday, at which point all the interested buyers will be there. The lenders will have been invited. Your team should be there also, right? You want a lot of buzz at your open house. And so that's another great opportunity to invite back your lenders. And so uh, this is the third and final piece of the private money management system, right? So again, we'll go back through the entire thing. And then in the meantime, drop questions. I'm happy to answer any questions you've got. As I you know, was going through this, I was envisioning spending roughly 10 minutes per section and then leaving a bit of time for Q&A. And then again, for those that want to go deeper offline, Evan, uh, drop the link, I think, once. If he can, Evan, drop the link again. I just want to make sure everybody can get to the link. And then go to the Kajabi. In fact, while I'm talking about these three parts, I'm going to show you it. And so, and so this is my version, right? This is my vision for this. You guys will be seeing this differently. Let me know in the chat if you're seeing my Kajabi. Um, and I want to I want to show you what it looks like inside of one of these modules. And so your version will look a little bit different. You'll actually see these videos, right? You'll see this video was recorded here. This is me talking about how to relentlessly raise the process for that. This is a shorter video. Jump to opportunity, how to frame the opportunity. Another video, another two minute video of me talking about how you would do that, how you would frame the opportunity. This is just one component of the opportunity section. Here's the lender documents. I alluded to these before. And here's the three downloadable documents, right? So all of this is here made available for you guys. So you can deploy this in your business. Actual video example of me delivering an update, right? Like, so here's the copy you would use to create your own investor update video. It doesn't get any easier than that, folks. <laughs> so I'll jump back out. But again, this is this is here for you guys if you're interested. Um, question uh, from Giorgio. Uh, does the course have this PDF as well as the templates for the decks, presentations, documents? Yep, everything is in there. Uh, I've made it so that you guys could R&D. If you've been on these calls before, you know I'm a fan. Rip off and duplicate, take our stuff, white label it, put your own branding behind it, adjust the copy so it serves you and deploy it, right? Just deploy it in your business. This is the kind of stuff that is gonna help you stand out. Um, I don't know how to uh, better articulate that. Like we uh, have been able to successfully raise for projects alongside our students because of this system. It's just plain and simple how it works. Uh, We've had hard money lenders uh, who often don't much care about any of the stuff we're talking about today. They're very much deal focused. They underwrite to the deal, whereas a private money lender will underwrite to you. Uh, we've had hard money lenders even look at this and say, wow, like this is the way we wish all of our borrowers presented their deals. So, um, so that's uh, to answer that question. Yeah, everything is back there. Everything is downloadable, editable. It's all there for you. Uh, how long have I been using this program, Viviana? Uh, I don't know if you mean the Flipper Force program. That's what we use to generate those reports that you saw a picture of. And uh, I've been using that for probably seven years. I've been using that program um, since my very first deal. I used that program to build out the reports that I presented to my lenders on my very first rehab seven years ago. Uh, John, how much have you raised with this system? That's a great question. I, I couldn't, I couldn't even guess. Um, we've raised to do every deal with this system. So, um, however much it's taken me to get into every deal is how much we've raised with this system. That's a great question. I would need to sit back and really think about it. Look at all the deals we've done. Look at what our cash to close has been. Um, but I can give you an example, right? So even just now, five active projects, roughly um, 200,000 cash to close. They're all very big projects. So if you think about that, that's just a million bucks with the active projects we've got right now with monies we've raised privately. So we've had to bring 230 to close on one. We've had to bring 180 to close on another. 
we brought 135 to close on another, right? And all that money was raised privately. So uh, that should give you some perspective, right? Like as you're doing deals and you're starting to scale and some folks are doing two, three, four of these a month, like clearly you're going to exhaust your reserves. You, you know, there's only so much that you can fund these deals with uh, before you're tapped or before. And that's even if you um, had a nice exit, right? Like if you had a decent exit, uh, you're still going to be limited with what you can do. So with your own resources. So you're going to need to be able to tap other people's money if you want to scale. If you only ever want to do one or two deals at a time, then you could very well fund those deals yourself, right? But just know that that's how you're, you're going to be limited there. So um, yeah, hopefully that was helpful and provided a lot of clarity for those that are interested in going deeper. You've got the link. Use the link. Um, pick up the Private Money Mastery course. Uh, it's Giorgio. Awesome, man. I'm glad you got it. I, and I, uh, I anticipate, uh, you're going to love it and, uh, let me know what you think of it. Um, we're on messenger if I remember right. So just hit me on messenger and I'm curious what your, uh, what your takeaways are as you're using this. Uh, I poured into this, uh, this deck, this, um, PDF that we spoke from today. I built that over the course of an entire day, realizing that like it was going to be the blueprint that I was going to drive from to ultimately create the course. So I knew I would only be able to compress so much into one page. And then on a call, 35, 40 minutes, again, there's only so much I can do, but by doing two, five, eight, 10 minute videos for each corresponding section that I can really bring you guys value. And that's what that course is. So uh, I look forward to hearing back from you for those of you to get it. I suspect you're going to love it. If you don't love it, send me a message and I'll credit you. Uh, I'm that confident you're going to love it. So uh, excited to hear back from you guys. Excited to have been able to bring you this message again. Um, always and ever will be beating the drum on how important it is to be raising private money. I just, um, you cannot over uh, estimate how valuable that is. When the deal comes, you want to be able to tap those folks that you've had conversations with to get the monies to close on the deal. If not, you'll be chasing. And uh, and like Alice said, that can be exhausting. And so let's help you avoid exhaustion <laughs> by being proactive. And Alice with the mic drop, you cannot scale without private money. Amen. <laughs> All right, guys, have a great rest of your day. Uh, for those that are local, I'll just tease it here. Uh, if you're local to the Central Jersey area, Today, uh, I'm speaking at an event later tonight. The link for that is also in the group. It's here for those of you catching this on Facebook. Um, and I encourage you to come check us out if you can make it. I look forward to seeing a lot of you there. And uh, have a great rest of your day, a great rest of your week. And I'll see you back on the next live training.